Welcome to Unknown Zone. Today, a veteran alien diplomat thinks he has seen it all until he meets humanity on Earth, a world of death full of surprises. Let's get into the story. In the vast and diverse galactic realm, nothing could surprise a veteran diplomat like me, Zorkel, a Crixian with six twitching eyes and three overworked hearts. I've already faced the telepathic terror of the Kanak hive mind and negotiated with methane breathers who consider indigestion a sign of respect. My diplomatic career had been marked by challenges and achievements, but Earth promised to be a completely different experience. My eyes, adapted to pick up the slightest variations in light, were always on the move, carefully examining every detail around me. My three hearts were beating at different rates, each processing a different set of emotions and information. The command room of the Galactic Council, with its flashing lights and floating holograms, was a familiar sight to me. But that day, there was tension in the air. Zorkel, you are being assigned to an extremely important diplomatic mission, announced Supreme Commander Corzal, an imposing figure with glittering scales that reflected the colors of the galactic rainbow. Yes, Supreme Commander, I replied, keeping my posture firm. What's the destination this time? Earth, he replied, his voice reverberating through the hall. A planet classified as a death world, due to its extreme conditions and the unpredictability of its inhabitants. I felt a slight acceleration in one of my hearts, Earth. I'd heard stories about that planet, but I'd never imagined I'd be sent there. Understood, Supreme Commander. When should I leave? Immediately, he said, handing me a device with the coordinates and mission data. You will be accompanied by Rx, a Kaizian. He's already on his way to your ship. Rx. I'd heard of him. A lover of strong emotions with twelve eyes and a penchant for chaos. I couldn't have a more different companion for myself. While I valued order and caution, RYX thrived in the midst of disorder. Understood, I replied, without letting my doubts show. On leaving the control room, I found RYX in the hangar. He was adjusting some equipment and looked excited. His eyes, all twelve of them, were constantly moving, reflecting an insatiable curiosity. Zorkel, we finally met! he exclaimed, approaching with a smile that showed his sharp teeth. Ready for the greatest adventure of our lives? Rex, nice to meet you, I replied, trying to match his enthusiasm. This mission on Earth will undoubtedly be challenging. Challenging and exciting, he corrected, lightly tapping my shoulder with one of his claws. Have you ever heard of human extreme sports? They say they defy death for fun. Yes, I've heard a few reports, I muttered, more to myself. I'm still trying to understand this need to seek danger. You'll love it, Zorkel. Earth is the perfect playground for a mind like mine, said Rix, laughing. Let's see if we can bring some of that adrenaline to our people. As we boarded the ship, my mind was full of thoughts. The mission on Earth wouldn't just be a diplomatic opportunity. It would be a test of my adaptability and ability to understand a culture totally different from my own. Rex seemed to be in his element while I tried to mentally prepare myself for what was to follow. Ready for the space jump? asked Rex as he adjusted the ship's controls. Ready, I replied, trying to sound confident. Earth awaited us with all its dangers and wonders, and so began the journey that would forever change my perception of the universe and myself. After adjusting to the idea of a mission on Earth, I received a detailed notification about the planet and its peculiarities. The information arrived via a coded hologram that projected a three-dimensional image of Earth in the center of my cabin. Watching the planet slowly rotate, my six trembling eyes picked up fascinating and at the same time, alarming details. Planet Earth, began the hologram's automated narration, classified as a world of death. Extreme atmospheric conditions, intense geological activity, and a diversity of deadly predators. Humans the primary inhabitants, exhibit a unique behavior of actively seeking out additional dangers for entertainment. I paused the narration, reflecting on what I had just heard. It was clear that the mission would be more complex than any other I had faced. Before proceeding, I decided to meet with RIX to discuss the notification. I found him in the ship's mess hall, his striking presence dominating the atmosphere. He was busy examining a holographic device that projected images of various terrestrial locations. Rex, did you see the notification about Earth? I asked, 
sitting down opposite him. Ah, Zorkel, of course I saw it. Fascinating, isn't it? He replied, his twelve eyes shining with excitement. This planet is a veritable playground of chaos and adventure. I can't wait to explore it all. Fascinating, yes, but also extremely dangerous, I observed. We need to be prepared to face adverse conditions and unpredictable behavior. That's exactly what makes the mission so exciting, Rex replied, leaning closer. Look at that. Extreme sports, unpredictable storms, and this thing called human entertainment. They seem to thrive in the midst of chaos. That's true, I agreed, but with a more serious expression. We need to understand the psychology behind this behavior if we want to establish any kind of effective diplomatic relationship. Psychology? Zorkel, sometimes you think too much. Humans are simple. They seek thrills and face danger head on. We just need to join them, show respect and courage. Maybe you're right, I admitted, realizing that Rex's approach could be useful. But still, we need a plan. Earth isn't like the other planets we've visited. Its unpredictability can be both an advantage and a challenge. Rex laughed, his sound reverberating around the room. Zorkel, you'll do fine. I'm here to make sure you experience everything Earth has to offer. We'll learn from the humans and maybe teach them something, too. Then we're in agreement, I concluded, standing up. Let's approach this mission with courage and an open mind, but always with caution. Perfect, exclaimed Ryex, raising one of his appendages in a gesture that I learned was a sign of excitement. Let's make history, Zorkel. Over the next few days, we prepared intensively for the mission. We studied maps weather reports, and cultural profiles of the humans. Every detail could be crucial to our survival and diplomatic success. I immersed myself in studies of the Earth, trying to understand the logic behind its apparent madness. Rx, I asked one day, while we were reviewing a report on human activities, what do you think makes humans thrive in such a hostile environment? I'd say it's their spirit, replied Rex thoughtfully. They seem to have a resilience that comes from facing and overcoming constant challenges. Maybe that's what we need to learn from them. You may be right, I replied, pondering his words. Perhaps the Earth's true strength lies not just in its nature, but in its inhabitants. With that thought in mind, I felt a little more prepared for what lay ahead. The Earth was a complex mystery, but also an opportunity for growth and learning. The Earth notification was not just a warning of danger, but an invitation to explore the limits of our understanding and adaptability. So... With every detail memorized and every possible scenario analyzed, we were ready to begin our descent into the most unpredictable and fascinating world we had ever encountered. Earth awaited us, with all its dangers and wonders, and we were prepared to face whatever came our way. As the spacecraft entered Earth's orbit, a spectacular sight unfolded before us. The Earth, a blue and green orb spinning amidst the vastness of space, looked peaceful and inviting. The white clouds intertwined over the oceans, forming mesmerizing patterns, and the green-covered landmasses promised a natural exuberance. It's beautiful, I muttered, unable to take my eyes off the panoramic view. Yes, it is. But don't be fooled, replied RYX with an excited smile. We're going to experience the true temperament of this planet soon. As we approached the surface, the ship began to shake violently, as if the planet was trying to repel us. The control screens displayed constant warnings of atmospheric turbulence. Prepare for descent, announced Rex with unrestrained excitement. This is going to be quite a ride. I held on to the chair, my three hearts beating out of rhythm. Hang on, Rex. We need to make sure the landing is safe. The spacecraft passed through layers of dense, turbulent clouds, and the Earth showed its true nature. Lightning cut across the sky in all directions, and gusts of wind threatened to divert our trajectory. Finally, the spacecraft managed to stabilize and began its final descent towards a green clearing. Our landing zone is in sight, said Ryex, adjusting the controls. We're going to land in now. With a final jolt, the ship landed with a dull thud, its landing strut sinking slightly into the soft ground. The ship's door opened with a hiss, revealing the outside world. The sunlight was bright and warm, and the air was full of unfamiliar scents. Welcome to Earth, Zorkel, said Ryex, enthusiastically walking down the ramp. Let's go and meet our human hosts. As we exited the ship, we were met by our human guides, Commander John and Dr. Emily. John was a tall, robust man with a serious countenance and piercing eyes. Emily, by his side, was a woman of medium height, with a warm smile and eyes full of curiosity. 
Welcome to Earth, said John, extending his hand. I'm Commander John, and this is Dr. Emily. We're here to make sure your stay is safe and informative. Thank you, I replied, trying to imitate the human handshake gesture. I'm Zorkel, and this is R.E.X. Nice to meet you, said Emily, shaking R.E.X.'s hand enthusiastically. We're looking forward to showing you our world. Let's start with a little tour, suggested John, gesturing to a nearby vehicle. There's a lot to see and learn. We entered the land vehicle, a metal behemoth equipped with all the comforts and technologies humans could offer. As we drove through the landscape, I was struck by the diversity of the terrain, dense forests, winding rivers, and rolling hills. You'll notice that the Earth has quite a varied geography, Emily explained, pointing to a holographic map of the planet. We're currently in the temperate region, but we have everything from arid deserts to icy tundras. That's impressive, I replied, absorbing all the information. How do you manage to adapt to so many different conditions? Adaptation is the key, said John, smiling slightly. Humans have learned to adjust and thrive in almost any environment. It's one of our greatest strengths. As we approached the city, the landscape began to change. Trees gave way to metal structures, and the sound of nature was gradually replaced by the constant hum of human civilization. The city was alive with activity. Vehicles moved quickly through the streets, and people hurried in all directions. Welcome to our capital, announced Emily, as the vehicle came to a stop in a large square. This is where our journey to understand culture and human resilience begins. We got out of the vehicle and were immersed in the chaotic vibe of the city. The energy of the place was evident, and I could feel my heart racing again, this time in sync with the pulse of the earth. I've never seen anything like it, I said to Ricks, who was equally impressed. It's organized chaos, he replied with a broad smile. I love every second of it. John and Emily led us through the busy streets, pointing out important landmarks and explaining the details of urban life. Here, every building has a story, John explained, pointing out an old structure. This one, for example, has survived three major earthquakes and still stands. It's a testament to our ability to resist and rebuild. As we absorbed everything, I began to understand the complexity and beauty of the Earth and its inhabitants. The diplomatic mission wouldn't just be an exchange of words and agreements. It would be a complete immersion in a culture of resilience and innovation. With Ricks by my side, I was ready to face the challenges and wonders that Earth had to offer. The first few days on Earth were a mixture of disorientation and fascination. John and Emily proved to be exceptional guides, always ready to explain the peculiarities of Earth life and ensure that our adaptation was as smooth as possible. However, culture shock was inevitable. The morning after our arrival, we woke up in our temporary lodgings, a set of modules adapted for our unique biological needs. The first task of the day was to explore a local market. Emily and John accompanied us, explaining the cultural and economic importance of these centers of commerce. Welcome to the Central Market, said Emily, as we walked through the busy streets. Here you'll find a variety of products, from fresh food to local crafts. The market was a riot of colors, sounds, and aromas. Food stalls exuded tantalizing scents, and vendors shouted their offers to attract customers. RIX was visibly delighted. Look at that, Zorkel, he exclaimed, pointing to a stall selling a variety of exotic fruits. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, never, I replied, as I looked at the products with curiosity. Emily, what are these colorful fruits? Those are mangoes and pitayas, she explained. They're tropical fruits that are very popular here. Would you like to try them? We accepted the offer, and Emily bought some fruit for us. The taste was amazing. Sweet, juicy, and unlike anything I'd ever tasted. Delicious, said Ryex with a broad smile. I could get used to that. As we walked through the market, a food stall caught Rix's eye. It was a small store selling something called tacos. These are tacos, explained John, noticing our interest. A typical Mexican food made with tortillas and various fillings. Would you like to try them? Sure, replied Rix immediately, always ready for new experiences. I hesitated for a moment, but curiosity won out. Yes, let's try it. The tacos were an explosion of flavors and textures, a culinary experience that defied my expectations. As we ate, we began to attract the attention of the humans around us. Some looked on with curiosity, others with surprise, but everyone seemed fascinated by our presence. Are you aliens? 
asked a boy, approaching us cautiously. Yes, we are, I replied, trying to be as welcoming as possible. We're diplomats from another star system, here to learn about your culture. The boy's eyes widened with excitement. That's incredible, you're like the heroes in the movies. Rex laughed, amused by the comparison. Maybe we're not heroes, but we're here to make friends and understand your world better. The interaction with the boy was a reminder that our presence on Earth was as much a curiosity as an opportunity to build cultural bridges. After visiting the market, John and Emily took us on a tour of the city's most iconic areas. We passed through the Central Park, where humans of all ages gathered for outdoor activities, from morning runs to family picnics. It's amazing how vibrant life is here, I commented, as I watched a family playing with their dog. There's a constant energy in everything they do. That's true, agreed John. We humans are resilient and find joy in the little things, even in the midst of chaos. Our next stop was a natural history museum. The building was imposing, with exhibits ranging from the first traces of life on Earth to the latest space achievements. One of the most impressive sections was dedicated to dinosaurs, with gigantic skeletons dominating the room. Incredible, said Ryex, examining a tyrannosaur fossil. Did these creatures really exist? Yes, millions of years ago, explained Emily. The Earth has a rich and complex history, full of fascinating creatures that have come and gone. As we explored the museum, I began to realize the depth of human history and culture. Every artifact, every exhibit told a story of survival, innovation, and adaptation. This dive into human history was essential to understanding its resilience and tenacity. In the evening, back at our lodgings, we reflected on the day. Rex was enthusiastic about everything he had seen and experienced. Zorkel, this mission is turning out to be one of the most enriching experiences of my life. He said, as he adjusted some of his devices, Earth is full of surprises and challenges, and I'm loving every moment of it. In choice, I agree, I replied thoughtfully. Humans have a unique ability to thrive in chaos. There's a lot we can learn from them. As I prepared for bed, my thoughts wandered over the day's many discoveries. Earth was a planet of contrasts, beauty and danger, chaos and order, vulnerability and strength. And I, a veteran diplomat from a distant star system, was only just beginning to understand the complexity of this fascinating world. The next morning we were awoken by the sound of excited voices and a slight tremor that seemed to go through the floor. John and Emily were waiting for us outside, ready to take us on a tour of the city's most vibrant and bustling areas. Today, we're going to explore the urban infrastructure and technological innovations of human cities, John announced with a confident smile. You'll see how we manage to thrive in the midst of chaos. Our first destination was a massive transportation hub. As we approached, a symphony of mechanical and human sounds enveloped us. Metal rails glistened under the sun as high-speed trains passed by, and autonomous vehicles crisscrossed the streets in a seemingly chaotic but incredibly synchronized flow. This is our main transportation hub, explained Emily, pointing to a huge building that seemed to pulse with life. Every day, millions of people pass through here, going to and from work, schools, and other activities. Impressive, I said, observing the constant movement. How do you manage to coordinate all this without collapsing? It's a combination of advanced technology and a bit of controlled chaos, John replied with a laugh. Humans are incredibly adaptable, and our infrastructure reflects that ability. As we made our way through the center, we were taken to an observation platform that offered a panoramic view of the city. From up there, the busy streets looked like arteries full of life, connecting neighborhoods and diverse communities. Each street and building has its own specific function, Emily explained. But the real secret is the interconnection between them. Each element, however chaotic it may seem, is part of a coherent whole. Like a living organism, I observed, struck by the comparison. You've created an urban ecosystem that is self-sustaining and continually evolving. We left the transport hub and headed for one of the city's oldest districts. The narrow streets and historic buildings contrasted with the modernity we had just witnessed. Small stores and cafes lined the sidewalks, and the air was filled with the tantalizing aromas of food prepared right there. This is the historic district, said John, stopping in front of an antique bookstore. Here we preserve the city's history and culture, maintaining a link with the past while moving forward into the future. 
We entered the bookstore, where the smell of aged paper and ink was comforting. Shelves crammed with ancient volumes surrounded us, each containing stories and knowledge accumulated over the centuries. Humans have a deep connection to their history, commented R.A.X., leafing through a book on ancient Earth civilizations. It's fascinating how you keep this heritage alive. Without the past, we can't understand our present or plan our future, said Emily with a smile. We preserve our history to learn from it and build something better. Our next stop was an urban park, a green oasis in the middle of the city's chaos. We walked along wooded trails and tranquil lakes where families and friends gathered for moments of leisure. Parks are essential for our well-being, explained John. They offer an escape from the frenetic pace of urban life and a space to reconnect with nature. It's an interesting contrast, I commented. You live in a highly technological environment, but you still value the simplicity and serenity of nature. This balance is crucial, Emily replied. Technology drives us, but nature sustains us. We need both to thrive. As the day progressed, we began to understand more deeply the resilience and adaptability of humans. They have created a world where tradition and innovation coexist, where chaos is tamed and transformed into a productive force. At the end of the afternoon, we were taken to a building with futuristic architecture, the Center for Technological Innovation. There, scientists and engineers were busy developing new technologies that promised to transform life on Earth and beyond. This is the heart of our research and development, said John as he guided us through the laboratories. We're constantly exploring new frontiers and challenges. We were introduced to a number of impressive innovations, from advanced artificial intelligence to new forms of sustainable energy. Each project reflected humans' relentless search for improvements and creative solutions to global problems. You guys really never stop, I observed in awe. Always searching, always innovating. That's what keeps us alive and moving forward, Emily replied with a twinkle in her eye. Earth is a challenging place, but that's exactly what drives us to be better. When night fell, we returned to our lodgings, exhausted but deeply impressed. The human city was a complex and dynamic organism, a testament to the infinite capacity of humans to adapt, innovate, and thrive. Today was a revealing day, said RYX as he settled into his module. I have a new appreciation for what these humans are capable of. I agree, I replied, reflecting on all the day's experiences. They turn chaos into a symphony of order and innovation. There's a lot we can learn from them. And so the first days on Earth became a journey of discovery and wonder where each experience broadened our understanding and respect for this fascinating planet and its resilient inhabitants. Human entertainment culture was one of the biggest surprises and also one of the most challenging to understand. Our curiosity about how humans balanced hard work with varied forms of leisure took us on a tour of some of the most popular activities. Our first experience was at a sports stadium. The event of the day was a soccer match, a sport widely enjoyed and fervently followed by millions of people. John and Emily took us to our seats, explaining the basic rules of the game. Football is a team sport where two teams compete to score goals in the opposition's goal, explained John, pointing to the pitch. It's a game of strategy, skill, and endurance. As we settled down, the stadium began to fill with an electric energy. Fans dressed in their team's colors shouted and chanted, creating a vibrant atmosphere. The sound of the drums and chants was almost hypnotic. It's amazing how emotionally involved you get with this, I commented, observing the crowd. Sports are a fundamental part of our culture, replied Emily. Not only do they promote health and healthy competition, but they also create a sense of community and identity. When the match started, I was immediately captivated by the intensity and skill of the players. The ball moved quickly from side to side, and each move was accompanied by an explosion of shouts and applause from the crowd. Go, 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 shouted RYX, clearly caught up in the spirit of the game. That's fantastic. The match was exciting right to the end, with tense moments and bursts of joy when the goals were scored. When it was over, I left the stadium with a new understanding of the impact sports had on human society. Our next stop was a movie theater, where we were introduced to the concept of immersive films. The movie chosen was a science fiction production full of action and impressive special effects. You're going to love this, said Emily as she led us to our seats. Movies are a form of escapism and reflection on our own reality. The lights dimmed 
and the screen came alive with images and sounds that transported us to distant worlds and epic adventures. The realism of the scenes and the quality of the storytelling were astonishing, making it easy to forget that we were sitting in a dark room. This is just spectacular, commented Ryax, his eyes shining with the reflection of the screen. It's like we're really there. That's what movies do, said John, smiling. They allow us to experience new realities and explore possibilities without leaving the place. After the movie, we went to an amusement park, a place that promised even more intense thrills and adventures. The roller coasters and mechanical attractions stood out against the horizon, illuminated by colored lights and accompanied by the sound of music and laughter. This is the place where adrenaline meets fun, explained John as he guided us through the park. People come here to experience strong emotions and challenge themselves in safe ways. Our first attraction was a gigantic roller coaster. Sitting side by side, we felt the nervousness and excitement as the cart slowly climbed the first hill. Are you ready, Zorkel? asked R.I.X., his enthusiasm infectious. Let's see if I can keep all my hearts in place, I replied, trying to stay calm. As the cart plummeted down the first hill, I was enveloped in a mixture of fear and elation. The sensation of speed and the dizzying loops were both terrifying and exciting. When we finally stopped, I felt more alive than ever. That was extraordinary, I said, trying to catch my breath. Welcome to the world of human entertainment, exclaimed R.A.X., still laughing with excitement. After exploring a few more attractions, including a haunted house and a spaceflight simulator, we began to understand the depth and diversity of the human entertainment culture. They were looking for strong emotions and adventure, but they were also finding ways to connect and relax. You really know how to live, I commented to Emily, as we sat down for a well-deserved rest. Life can be challenging, she said, smiling, but our moments of leisure and fun are what give us the strength to keep going. They remind us to enjoy every moment and find joy in the little things. As I reflected on the day, I realized that humans' quest for entertainment wasn't just about fun. It was a way of balancing the chaos of everyday life, of creating memories and strengthening social bonds. It was an expression of their resilience and a celebration of their ability to find beauty and joy even in the most unpredictable situations. Human entertainment culture was a window into the soul of its people, a testament to their strength, creativity, and indomitable spirit. And I, a veteran diplomat from a distant star system, felt deeply privileged to witness and participate in these unique and transformative experiences. As we continued our stay on Earth, our interactions with humans became more frequent and meaningful. Each encounter was an opportunity for learning and discovery, offering new perspectives on Earth life and culture. One morning, Emily invited us to visit a local school. I want you to see how we educate our young people, she said excitedly. Education is the foundation of our society. The school was a welcoming building, with colorful murals and children running around the courtyard. We were greeted by the principal, Mr. Thompson, a middle-aged man with a warm smile. Welcome. It's an honor to have you here, he said, shaking our hands. The children are looking forward to meeting you. We were led into a classroom full of curious students, their eyes shining with excitement. The teacher, Mrs. Martinez, introduced us to the class. Class, this is Zorkel and R.E.X., our galactic visitors, she said. They're here to learn about our culture, and we can learn a lot from them, too. Hello, said a girl, raising her hand. Do you have schools on your planet? Yes, we have something similar, I replied, smiling. Our schools are different, but the aim is the same, to learn and grow. What's the most interesting thing you've seen on Earth? Asked a boy, his eyes full of curiosity. There are so many interesting things, said Rix thoughtfully. But I think the most fascinating thing is the way you come together and face challenges together. That's something we can all admire. As we interacted with the children, I was struck by their intelligence and curiosity. They asked deep questions and reflected on our answers with surprising maturity. Later, we visited a hospital, where we were introduced to Dr. Clara, a dedicated doctor who showed us around and explained the human health system. Our job is to ensure that everyone has access to the care they need, she explained, as we walked through the busy corridors. Health is a fundamental right, and we do our best to take care of everyone. It's a noble task, I commented. How do you deal with so many illnesses and emergencies? With a lot of dedication and innovation, she replied. We're always looking for new ways to treat and prevent illness, and collaboration is essential. 
Our advances in medicine are the result of years of research and teamwork. As we watched the doctors and nurses in action, I realized how much compassion and empathy were valued in human culture. They cared for each other with a deep sense of responsibility and humanity. That's something we can take back to our own healthcare systems, said Ricks in awe. Compassion is a powerful force. Our interactions weren't just limited to educational and medical settings. We were invited to a dinner at John's home, where we met his family and experienced human hospitality up close. Welcome to our home, said John's wife, Laura, with a warm smile. We're very happy to welcome you. The table was laden with delicious dishes, from traditional roasts to tempting desserts. We sat around the table, sharing stories and laughter. What's life like on your planet? asked John's daughter, a teenager called Lily. Is it very different from Earth? Yes and no, I replied, thinking carefully. The landscapes and technologies are different, but the emotions and values we share are very similar. We all seek happiness, security, and connection. That's true, said Laura, serving more food. In the end, we're all similar, no matter where we come from. Dinner was an enriching experience. We talked about our families, traditions, and hopes for the future. Each story shared was a step towards better understanding and mutual respect. Over the next few days, we continued to explore and learn. We took part in cultural festivals, watched musical performances, and even visited a farm where we saw firsthand the importance of agriculture and community work. Every experience here is a lesson, said Ryex, as we returned to our lodgings after a particularly hectic day. Humans are incredibly diverse and resilient. I agree, I replied, reflecting on everything we had seen. They face challenges with a courage and creativity that is truly inspiring. As more galactic species flock to Earth, drawn by stories of its dangers and human ingenuity, the planet became a symbol of adaptability and tenacity. Our own journey, initially full of fear, turned into a transformative experience. I returned to the Crixian homeworld with a new appreciation for the unpredictable beauty of life. Roy X's tourist adventures on Earth became legendary, catering to thrill-seekers from all over the galaxy. Earth, with its chaotic charm, continued to challenge and inspire all who dared to visit. For me, occasional returns to this unlikely world now brought a sense of peace, a reminder of the infinite possibilities that arise from embracing chaos. Every interaction and learning experience on Earth was a stone in the construction of a cultural bridge that connected our worlds in a deep and lasting way. Earth was not just a world of death, it was a planet of life, hope, and infinite possibility. And we were witnesses and participants in this grand tapestry of human experience. As the days turned into weeks, I began to notice a profound change within myself. What began as a routine diplomatic mission turned into a personal journey of self-discovery. The experiences on Earth, with their diversity and resilience, were shaping my perception in unexpected ways. One quiet afternoon, as we walked through a serene park, I began to reflect on this transformation. The sky was tinged orange and pink by the sunset and the soft sound of leaves in the wind created an atmosphere of peace. Zorkel, you look thoughtful, observed Rix, his twelve eyes watching intently. Yes, Rix, I replied, smiling. I'm just reflecting on everything we've seen and experienced here. This mission has changed my perspective in ways I never imagined. How so? he asked, curious. Well, when we arrived, I was full of fear and uncertainty about this world of death, I began. But now I see Earth in a completely different way. This planet is a symbol of resilience and adaptability. Humans have an inner strength that is truly inspiring. I knew you'd fall in love with this place, said Rix with a smile. Humans are incredible. They face every challenge with courage and optimism. It makes me wonder if we can learn to be more like them. Definitely, I agreed. Earth's unpredictability has taught us to embrace chaos, to find beauty in disorder, and to cherish every moment. As we walked along, we found Emily sitting on a bench, reading a book. She looked up and called out to us with a smile. Hi, you two. Would you like to join me? She asked, closing the book. Sure, Emily, I replied, taking a seat next to her. We were just discussing how this mission has changed us. Oh, that's great to hear, she said, pleased. Earth has a unique way of affecting people. It can be chaotic, but it's also incredibly beautiful. You know, Emily, said Ricks, the resilience of humans really impresses me. 
I always thought that order was the key to survival, but now I see that adaptability is just as crucial. That's something we learn from an early age, Emily explained. Life on Earth is full of challenges and uncertainties, but that's what makes us strong. Every adversity faced is a lesson learned. As we talked, a light rain began to fall, creating a gentle rhythm in the leaves around us. We didn't run for cover. Instead, we embraced the moment, feeling the serenity it brought. You see? This is what I'm trying to say, I said, reaching out to feel the raindrops. On Earth, even rain has a way of teaching us something, patience, acceptance, and the beauty in simple things. Emily smiled and nodded. You're beginning to understand the essence of our world, Zorkel. Earth is a place of contradictions, but that's what makes it so special. The next few days were a sequence of revealing experiences. We took part in a cultural festival, where we danced to traditional music and tasted food from all over the world. Every interaction, every moment shared with the humans deepened my understanding and appreciation of their culture. One night, as we watched the stars from the terrace of a tall building, John joined us. You know, Zorkel, he began, Earth can be a difficult place to understand, but you seem to be grasping something essential. I'm trying, John, I replied, looking up at the vast, starry sky. You humans have a unique way of finding meaning and purpose, even in the most challenging circumstances. That's true, said John, thoughtfully. We grew up with the idea that every challenge is an opportunity to grow and improve, and I think you and Ricks are beginning to see that, too. Definitely, said Ricks, his eyes focused on the stars. I came on this mission expecting adrenaline and adventure, but I found something much deeper a new way of looking at the world and life. The diplomatic mission on Earth not only broadened our knowledge of humans, but also taught us valuable lessons about ourselves. Each day, each experience was a piece of a bigger puzzle, revealing a universal truth about resilience, adaptability, and the beauty of chaos. When the time came to leave, I felt a mixture of emotions. The Earth, with all its complexities, had become a part of me. We said goodbye to John and Emily with hugs and promises to return. You'll always be welcome here, said Emily with an emotional smile. And remember, Earth will be waiting for you. Thank you, Emily, I replied, feeling a tightness in my chest. You've given us more than we can put into words. As the ship took off, I looked out of the window at the blue and green planet that now meant so much to me. Earth was no longer just a world of death. It was a symbol of life, hope, and endless possibilities. And with this new perspective, I was ready to share these lessons and experiences with my own people, knowing that true strength lies in embracing chaos and finding beauty in the unpredictability of life. The journey back to our home planet Crixia was a mixture of anticipation and reflection. Earth had changed us in profound and unexpected ways. As the ship approached our world, my three hearts beat in sync, filled with a new sense of purpose. Zorkel, we're almost there, said Riex, his twelve eyes shining with the familiar sight of Crixia. I feel like we have so much to share. Yes, Riex, I agreed. Our mission has gone beyond expectations. We're not just coming back with information, but with a new perspective on life. When we landed, we were greeted by Supreme Commander Korzal and a delegation of Crixians eager to hear our findings. Welcome back, Zorkel and Rix, greeted Korzal, his scales glistening in the light of our triple sun. We look forward to hearing about your mission on Earth. Supreme Commander, it's an honor to be back, I said, bowing. Earth is a place of contrasts and resilience. We've learned a lot about adaptability and the beauty of embracing chaos. We were led into the conference room where a large audience was waiting. With the help of holograms, we began to present our experiences and findings. We showed images of vibrant markets, urban and natural landscapes, and meaningful interactions with humans. Earth is a planet that thrives on diversity and unpredictability, I explained, pointing to an image of a busy market. Humans find strength in facing constant challenges and adapt with a creativity that is truly inspiring. What impressed me most, added Ryax, was the way humans integrate tradition and innovation. They honor their past while exploring new frontiers. This is something we can learn from to strengthen our own society. The board members and the audience were visibly impressed. There were murmurs of surprise and admiration as we continued to share our stories. Then it was Rix's turn to talk about the adventures that have become legendary. 
Earth is a playground for thrill-seekers, he said, showing images of our visit to the amusement park. But beyond the thrills, there is a depth of experience that teaches us about courage and resilience. After our presentation, Korzal stood up, visibly moved. Zorkel, R.E.X., your discoveries are invaluable. Earth, with all its dangers and wonders, has shown us that true strength lies in the ability to adapt and grow in the face of adversity. Applause filled the room, and I felt a wave of pride and gratitude. Our mission had been successful, not only in diplomatic terms, but also as a journey of personal and cultural transformation. Over the next few days, we shared our experiences with the people of Crixia through lectures, exhibitions, and direct interactions. Each story, each lesson learned, spread like wildfire, inspiring others to see beyond the borders of our world and embrace the idea that chaos and order can coexist harmoniously. One quiet afternoon, while walking through the gardens of our palace, I met Corzal. He was watching the sunset, his scales reflecting the golden and red colors of the sky. Supreme Commander, I called, approaching. May I join you? Of course, Zorkel, he said, beckoning me to sit beside him. You have brought great wisdom to our people. The earth has changed you in many ways, hasn't it? Yes, I replied, looking at the horizon. The earth has taught me to embrace chaos, to find beauty in unpredictability. And above all, it showed me that real strength lies in adaptability. Those are valuable lessons, said Corzal thoughtfully. Our world, although different, can benefit from these ideas. We need to learn to be more flexible and creative in our approaches. Chucked, I agree, I said. Earth has shown us that innovation emerges from chaos, and that resilience is forged in adversity. If we can integrate these lessons into our society, we will be stronger and more united. Corzel nodded, a soft smile forming on his lips. You've done an excellent job, Zorkel. I'm proud of you and of Rick's. Your mission is a milestone in our history. When night fell, I left the gardens with a heart full of hope and determination. The mission on Earth was over, but the lessons learned would continue to shape our future. From that moment on, our world would never be the same. As Rick's and I prepared for our next tasks, we knew that Earth would always have a special place in our hearts. The adventures we experienced there and the lessons we learned would be passed on to future generations of Crixians, inspiring a new era of innovation, resilience, and a deep appreciation for the beauty of chaos. And so, with our mission complete and our spirits renewed, we set out on our continuing journey, ready to take on new challenges and explore the infinite possibilities the universe had to offer. The Earth had transformed us, and this transformation was only the beginning of something even greater. Months had passed since our return to Crixia, and the lessons learned on Earth continued to resonate in our society. Ryoyx and I were often invited to share our experiences at conferences and cultural events. Terra had become a symbol of adaptability and tenacity, inspiring many to look beyond known boundaries and embrace the unknown. One sunny afternoon, I received an unexpected message from John and Emily. They were organizing an intergalactic summit on Earth where leaders from various planets would meet to discuss cooperation and innovation. The invitation was irrefutable. Zorkel, it looks like we're heading back to Earth, said R.I.X., his eyes shining with excitement. Are you ready for another adventure? I'm more than ready, I replied, feeling a surge of anticipation. Let's see how Earth continues to surprise us. The journey back to Earth was uneventful, and upon landing, we were greeted by John and Emily with warm smiles. Welcome back, exclaimed Emily, hugging us. It's wonderful to see you again. It's good to be back, I replied, looking around with a nostalgic smile. Earth never loses its charm. The intergalactic summit was held in an imposing building with breathtaking views of the city and the ocean. Representatives from several planets were present, each eager to share and learn. We're here to celebrate diversity and explore new forms of cooperation, said John in his opening speech. Earth has taught us a lot about resilience and innovation and we want to share those lessons with all of you. Over the next few days, I took part in numerous discussions and workshops. I was particularly struck by a session on sustainability and climate adaptation, where human experts shared their strategies for coping with environmental change. On Earth, we face many climate challenges, explained Dr. Emily during her presentation. But every challenge is an opportunity for innovation. We have developed technologies and practices that can be applied across the universe. 
After the presentation, I approached Dr. Emily. The solutions you have created are impressive. I see so many possibilities for application in Crixia. Thank you, Zorkel, she replied, smiling. Collaboration between our worlds can generate great advances. I look forward to seeing how we can work together. One evening, Rix and I were invited to a cultural event in the city center. There was music, dancing, and a variety of food from all over the world. The atmosphere was vibrant and full of joy. This is the essence of Earth, said John as we walked through the event. Celebrating life, even in the face of adversity. Finding strength in diversity and unity. I agreed, feeling a deep connection with humanity. The Earth has taught us that true strength lies in the ability to adapt and find beauty in every moment. At the end of the event, as we watched the illuminated city, Emily approached me. Zorkel, you mentioned that Earth changed your perspective. Can you tell me more about that? Of course, Emily, I replied, looking up at the twinkling lights. Earth has taught me to embrace chaos, to see beauty in unpredictability. Every experience here has shown me that resilience is a powerful force and that adaptability is essential for survival and growth. Your journey is inspiring, she said, touching my arm lightly. Earth is a special place, and I'm glad you've been able to see that. Me too, Emily, I replied gratefully. Earth will always be a place where I find peace and inspiration. As the dome came to an end, I felt that a new chapter was beginning. Earth, with its chaotic charm, continued to challenge and inspire all who visited. For me, occasional returns to this unlikely world now brought a sense of peace and a reminder of the infinite possibilities that arise from embracing chaos. Back on Crixia, we implemented many of the ideas and innovations learned on Earth. Our society became more adaptable and resilient, inspired by the determination and creativity of humans. Earth was no longer just a death world in our records, it was a beacon of hope and innovation. One quiet afternoon, as I gazed up at Crixia's triple sky, I felt a deep sense of satisfaction. The mission on Earth had been more than just a diplomatic trip, it had been a personal and cultural transformation, a journey that taught us to find strength in adversity and beauty in chaos. And so, with the lessons of Earth deeply rooted in our hearts, we continue to explore, innovate, and grow, knowing that true resilience comes from embracing the unknown and finding beauty in every challenge. The Earth, with all its complexities and wonders, would forever be a symbol of adaptability and tenacity, inspiring future generations to look to the stars with hope and determination.